All eyes will be on the giant planet Jupiter during National Astronomy Week from the 1st to the 8th of March 2014, when the planet will blaze brighter than any other object in the evening sky. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system. It's so big that if you could put it on a set of scales, it would weigh twice as much as all the other planets put together. And that small blue thing to the left of it on this slide is the Earth for comparison. Here's some facts and figures about it. It's over five times farther from the Sun than we are, and it takes nearly 12 years to complete one orbit. And it's also very bright. During National Astronomy Week 2014, it will be particularly prominent in our night skies. And when we look at Jupiter, we see just clouds. It's completely wrapped in clouds. And these are drawn out into horizontal bands by the planet's rapid rotation. It spins once in less than 10 hours, which makes it the fastest spinner of all the planets. And the only persistent feature in the clouds is this oval in the southern hemisphere called the Great Red Spot, which is a storm cloud several times larger than the Earth. And it's red because of chemical compounds such as phosphorus that are dredged up from lower down in the atmosphere by convection currents. And those two objects to the right of the red spot aren't part of Jupiter's clouds. This one hanging here like a Christmas decoration is one of Jupiter's moons called Io. And the black dot to its left is its shadow thrown onto the cloud tops. And if you were to dive into Jupiter's clouds, you'd find that there's no solid surface beneath. The atmosphere just keeps getting thicker until the gas turns into a liquid and you'd be crushed. At the centre there may be a solid core, but there's no way we would ever be able to reach it, so we're certainly never going to land on Jupiter. And this is the atmosphere of Jupiter as though it was opened up into a strip and we're hovering over one point, like a geostationary satellite. And this movie covers 24 rotations of the planet, that's 10 Earth days, and it keeps looping back to the start. And it gives you some idea of the incredible complexity in the atmosphere, with clouds moving one way along one belt and moving the other way along the next belt, and the red spot swirling around anti-clockwise because it's a high-pressure region, an anti-cyclone. And all the time there are new spots and storms breaking out, and old ones dying away. And the occasional flying white and black dots are various moons and their shadows. The Great Red Spot swallows other spots from time to time, and that's presumably what helps keep it alive. And here's an example from 2008, caught by the Hubble Space Telescope. You see a smaller red spot coming in from the left, getting closer, and finally he's almost completely vanished. Now Jupiter is fascinating not just for its atmosphere, but also its family of moons, and the biggest of them can be seen through a pair of binoculars. This big four are called the Galilean satellites because they were discovered by Galileo 400 years ago. I've lined them up here with our own moon at the right, and as you can see, three of them are bigger than our moon and one's not much smaller, so they're like little planets in their own right. The innermost one, called Io, turns out to be the most volcanically active body in the solar system. When the American space probe Voyager 1 flew past Jupiter back in 1979, it caught several volcanoes on Io in the act of erupting. And one of them was spewing out this plume of material hundreds of miles into space at the edge of Io. And the reason that Io is so active is that it's squeezed all the time by the gravitational pull of Jupiter, which releases heat. And that makes Io molten inside. And what it erupts isn't normal lava, but sulphur and sulphur dioxide, which gives it this bizarre range of colours that make it look like a giant cheese and tomato pizza. And this is a movie of Io put together from space probe photographs. The big red oval coming round now is a ring of sulphur sprayed out from a vent called Pele, not after the footballer, but the Hawaiian volcano goddess. And in fact, there are hundreds of volcanic vents all over Io. And it's truly one of the bizarre worlds of the solar system. And in complete contrast, the next moon out, Europa, is a world of ice. The ice has cracked in places and minerals have oozed out, causing brownish stains. And when you look at the ice in detail, it looks as though people have been skating and walking on it. 
There may well be an ocean under the ice, and it's even been speculated that there could be some form of life in that ocean, by analogy with the weird forms of life you find deep in the oceans on Earth. And you could scarcely imagine two more different moons orbiting the same planet than volcanic Io and icy Europa. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system, and in fact it's even slightly larger than the planet Mercury, so if it orbited the Sun rather than Jupiter it would be regarded as a true planet. Its icy surface is a mixture of old, dark regions and younger ridges and grooves caused by movement of the crust, peppered with bright splashes where impacts have exposed the ice underneath. Callisto is darker and much more heavily cratered, suggesting that its surface hasn't changed much for billions of years. Europa, Ganymede and Callisto are the targets of the European Space Agency's mission called the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, which is due for launch in 2022. Jupiter has over 60 moons in all, but the others are much smaller. You can see the big four with just binoculars and small telescopes. So watch them move around the planet from night to night during National Astronomy Week. And for more about Jupiter, check out our website at astronomyweek.org.uk. I'm Ian Ridpath for National Astronomy Week.